Hello everyone, it's Nora. Great to see you. I know this is a video recording that Hannah is kindly going to post um, in efforts to kind of get some word out there about my upcoming pop-up class this next Saturday about yoga for better sleep. Um, and I just am really excited to offer this little extra video tidbit. My hope is that it might be something you could use to help you before you go to sleep, um, you know, 30, 45 minutes, an hour, even before you go to sleep. And then if you do it a few times and then have your own flourishes and sprinkles that you like to add on your own yoga Sunday, that would be awesome. Um, even sharing those with other yogis would be amazing. Um, I'm sure Hannah would be able to um, kind of start a thread on that discussion, at least on the Facebook page, if not in the studio as such. So we will get started. Um, just get on some comfy uh, pajama pants and kind of whatever you'd like to sleep in. Um, you may or may not even need a yoga mat. Um, you could just do something in your bedroom or an easy uh, uh, area in your home with enough space. So nothing very formal, no props needed. We'll just get a little bit of movement to help us just ease our muscles into some more relaxing poses and then end with a yoga nidra practice, which shouldn't be more than about um, 10 minutes. Um, but yoga nidra is a yogic sleep. Hannah has a beautiful blog post from February about this, and I will include this in part of my uh, pop-up class this Saturday as well. It's a practice I found hugely beneficial, um, and so I hope that can be um, incorporated into more of our pop-up classes and things. It's a really, really neat, um, practice involving a yogic sleep where you're consciously subconscious shall we say and it kind of rides the line between wakefulness and sleep and where a lot of uh, release and healing can be done that's uh, really beneficial to everyone so we'll start at the top of our mats maybe just landing from the day um, as many of you know and I I'm a big fan of being a mom and a parent, but we have two littles at home and sometimes there's just not enough time. In fact, all the time there's not enough time. Um, sometimes it feels like you can skid into your mat if you come to a later class at yoga at the studio or find time to practice on your own at home. But just, I think it's really important kind of whatever you're doing, transitioning into that space and that energy, um, and I just noticed, I know the, the lighting is a little bit dark, but that was a bit of my intention. Um, my hope is you do play this kind of with lights down a little bit, kind of winding down for bed so that the brightness doesn't kind of jar you and have the opposite effect. But just coming to the top of your mat, maybe taking some few shoulder rugs back and forward, maybe some kind of side stretches if that just moves you kind of a little bit of a free for all for a second. And take a big inhale. Full exhale out. Maybe inhale, gather your hands into a loose prayer with some space between your palms. And just kind of capture your day in between that sphere you've created with the tips of your fingers and your thumbs, in between the palms of your hands. And just honor it for what it was. Take another inhale, and on the exhale, release that day, whatever energies you believe in. And then inhale, draw your hands into center. Full exhale. And then just allow yourself some breath to essentially just sweep the energy from the day off your shoulders. Sounds a little bit <laughs> out there, but it really does feel good to just think of just, you know, maybe some stuff that didn't go great or kind of just left a little bit of an energetic grime on you or you just any stuff, just whisk it away. Kind of cleanse yourself off so you can really allow yourself this time on your mat to wind down for sleep, which we all really, really need. And most of us don't get the quality, if not the quantity, uh, that would serve us. So just take 
few more swipes if you need. And then follow that with a big inhale. Sigh it out, exhale. <sighs> Maybe let your feet separate a little bit apart. And then inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, soften your knees. Allow a nice forward fold here. And then inhale, halfway lift. Just walk your hands up your shins. Spine is flat, gaze is down. And then exhale, release. Inhale, root down, push up with a reverse swan dive. And then exhale, hands to heart. Take that again, just a few half sun salutes. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, soften your knees, hands to heart. Take an easy forward fold just for a beat or two. Maybe pedal your knees right and left. And then inhale, halfway lift, flat spine, draw your shoulders away from your ears. And then exhale, release, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, root to rise, reverse swan dive, come on up. Exhale, take a little back bend here. Maybe you want to cactus your arms, goal post down, push your hips forward, elbows draw back. If it feels better to bend your knees to keep your low back happy, go there. Just open up your heart. Feel just that nice curve in your spine. Maybe even really stick your hips out if that feels good. And then inhale, come on up. Exhale, forward fold, soften your hands. Maybe stay your hips here. And just a little segue, as I forgot to mention in the beginning of class, is I have some, oh gosh, it is called Jazz for Sleep on my Spotify account. I think most of us have some kind of music um, database we subscribe to. Um, it's have some fun picking out some sounds that just really ease you into a, an evening, into bed, and just have those in the background too. I think it's really, really just adds a little extra something nice to a practice about now. And then inhale, find your way back up. And then exhale, hand to heart. And then as you're ready, release your hands by your hips. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, take another back bend here. Maybe arms stay wide into angel wings or elbows can tuck into your ribs. Palms and wrists flex as if you're delivering two pizzas. Maybe bending into your knees a little bit more if that serves your low back better. Just opening up here. No need to drop the head back extremely. But if that feels good, of course, go there. And then as you're ready, inhale, come all the way back up. Exhale, hands to heart, take a forward fold. And then here, in this forward fold, we're going to be here just for a few minutes. Um, I love this because it really gets into your hamstrings, which lets your low back release, and all the way across your spine. So you're really getting a nice stretch from your Achilles all the way through your cervical spine. Um, which can just be a really nice uh, physiologic but also energetic release. Um, one tip, and I think I say this, I think, I hope, a relative amount in my yin classes, is I don't have a great space to show you here. But if you were to back your hips up to a wall and then come into a forward fold, and then you can shimmy your heels and hips closer to the wall as you take a forward fold, that support, particularly as you're trying to wind down, is nice. Um, it gives you just a little extra tap against your bum, so you're reminded to allow the back of your leg to open. And if things are a little bit tender, it's a nice little thing to lean into as well. So I guess maybe you can see it. Here we are. So just find that maybe feet are a little bit wider than you typically would take a forward fold um, in an inner fire flow. And then just adjust. Some of these wall assists are just super. You can really do whatever you would like with your hands. If it feels good to just let your hands drop, maybe 
backs of the hands to the floor, your mat, palms up, or giving yourself uh, a hug behind your knees, or that traditional uh, interlaced forearms. Whether your forearms are in front of your forehead or behind your head, if it's behind your head, you might want to separate your feet a little bit wider. To me, it felt a little tippy otherwise. But let's keep your knees bent. They'll, they'll probably straighten a little bit as you hang out here. But don't be afraid to try that wall adjustment or assist, shall we say. The pose doesn't have to be static. You can kind of flex your knees and straighten them, kind of giving the wall a massage with your butt. Maybe pedaling your knees, maybe swaying your torso. And you'll find your stillness when your body is ready. If there's a, a decent sized gap between your belly and your thighs, um, it might be nice to just grab a um, comforter, an afghan, even one of your um, thinner pillows from your bed and slide that in between just to give you some more support. Big toes pointing in, heels a little bit wider than your toes, a little pigeon toed might open up your low back a little bit more. Just take a few breaths here to inhale. I know there's a little bit of restriction. And just exhale. If there's any last little kind of swipes of energy you'd like to get off your shoulders, do that. You can almost feel the space in between your vertebrae increasing a bit. Find maybe it's just a little baby twist, left hand in front of your face, right hand just in front of your right foot, fingers tented. And reverse it. Take a few more beats here. Might feel good to interlace your fingers, and then place your palms and interlace fingers at the back of your head, where the, the nape of your neck, basically where your hairline stops, or where your head and your neck actually meet. And then draw your forearms to line your jaw. And then elbows point between your big toes and then drive your elbows down. A little bit of extra weight here. Might feel good on the cervical spine to find a little extra length. If you're crunching into your mat, let them release. And just drop your hands, whatever shape they took, just to the floor of your mat. Maybe really stretch your gaze from your belly button. Maybe even to your each armpit, once to the right look, once to the left look. And then allow yourself to come onto your hands and just walk yourself away from your wall. Kind of bend and straighten your legs just to bring life back from that stretch. And then allow your hands to walk yourself back up. Maybe bending your knees as you come up, you might feel a little release in your low back there. It might feel good to take a little counter back bend, just a nice easy one. It doesn't have to be super big. And then inhale, come back up. And then coming back to your mat. Just take a few sun salutes here, but very easy, really just as we're going to take a few low lunges to open the hips and the psoas a bit. So just allow yourself to open up, but nothing where you're kind of flirting with a power flow. That's not where we're going. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands to heart, forward fold. 
Inhale, halfway lift, plant your hands, bend your knees. Step back just into a tabletop pose. Maybe keep your toes tucked or not, whatever feels good, and take a few round of cat cow. I love a really big cat where your hips push to your heels and you tense up on your fingertips. And then inhale, roll forward. Find that cow. Draw your shoulders broad away from your ears. Look up. And we'll do once or twice more at your own pace. Cat cow. Beautiful. And then as you're ready, maybe from here, if you'd like to take three limb pose where you lower your chest through to your mat and then slide your legs behind you, that's a nice option. We're certainly not doing any chaturangas here. Or a nice option, this is a salute to the fabulous Karen Rigsby on Saturday mornings where you keep your knees wide. And then just let your hips sag into just a super luscious, easy up dog. Maybe taking a few twists if you like. Or if you prefer doing that eight limb pose, you could certainly then just find a sphinx pose and maybe look right and look left. Really, if you have some variation in between, take that, whatever feels good. You're your own best teacher. And then exhale, release, pushing back up into tabletop, maybe take a cow. And then inhale back, downward facing dog. Maybe keep the dog pretty wide, knees are bent. Pushing through with your hands, the top of your mat, pushing your heart closer to your knees. And then inhaling, rolling forward into a high plank. Maybe kicking those feet wide only to drop your knees. Let your hips sag. Or if you like to take the eight limb pose, sliding through into a sphinx pose, that is beautiful too. And then as you're ready, come back. Maybe take a cat if the cow needs to follow, that's cool just really allows your spine to move and stretch and release. And then exhale, down dog. And then we'll take that one more time. Inhaling down into your tabletop. Maybe taking a round of cat cow. And then coming into your very slight little back bend, whether that ends up being a sphinx or this up dog modification. And then exhale as you're ready, toes touch, knees wide, child pose. Just for a few breaths here. Just feel that first stretch into your hips, your low back. And then as you're ready, just put yourself, push yourself up, excuse me, a little bit. Keep your lower body in the wide knee child's pose. And then inhale, right arm reaches up. You push yourself up just a little bit. And then exhale, thread the needle, right hand underneath, left arm, dropping right shoulder down. Maybe your right cheek is on the mat. If your neck is super flexible, maybe left cheek is on the mat. Whatever feels good. And then walk your left fingers forward a little bit, tensing your fingertips, and then drawing that left shoulder down as if you could tuck it into your left jean pocket. Nice little shoulder stretch here. And check in with your breath, how that inhale feels, how deep and long that exhale can go. And then 
softening into that left forearm so you can inhale that right arm reaching up and then exhale release dropping that right forearm down inhale left arm reaches high exhale thread the needle right hand under right or excuse me left hand underneath right um, upper arm and then coming down whether your left cheek is on the mat or the right right hand walks out to a little bit of a tent with those fingers and then pull that right shoulder down maybe letting that right hand push your hips closer to your heels take an inhale here as deep as you can and exhale out for a little bit longer than your inhale just settle And then as you're ready, slide that right forearm towards you. Inhale, pick that left arm up. And then release. Coming back to a tabletop, maybe taking a round or two of cat cow. And then exhale downward facing dog beautiful and then just a few more breaths and down dog and then inhale right leg behind you maybe bend knee stack hip left heel sinks pushing that right knee up a little bit more maybe gaze Travels underneath that right arm. And then exhale, release, low lunge. And just maybe landing here, tented fingers frame, right foot. And then exhale back into half Hanuman. Yogi's choice here, whether you point your toes up towards the sky and maintain a flat spine, pulling that right hip back, planting that right heel as if you could drag, but don't, that mat kind of wrinkle it underneath you. Or pointing your toes and letting your spine round. If it would feel good, you're certainly welcome to come into a little bit more of a hamstring stretch. Where you sit back on your mat, left heel slides to the left of your um, left thigh, and then just take a forward fold here. And inhale, come back to that low lunge. Just adjust, let your hips open. Let them drop a little bit lower. And then one more time, exhale, half on your mind. Or any variation. And then any variation, we're going to take a little twist, whether you like to come up to a low lunge and then take that left elbow over right knee and find a traditional low lunge just like you would find in a, or a low lunge twist in an inner fire flow sequence. Or if you like to simply plant that left hand down by right foot, maybe hand comes to your low back or maybe it hugs your right knee in as you twist. And then exhale, release both hands on your mat to the inside of that right foot. Sweep that back to a tabletop and then exhale, downward facing dog. And then inhale, left leg behind you, bend knee, stack hip, open up. Weight in that right foot, right heel, gaze comes up underneath that left upper arm 
and then release it into your low lunge. Fingers tented, frame that left foot. Just take a few pulses even here just to open up. And then as you're ready, half Hanuman, whether toes point up, flat spine, or toes point in your spine round, or you slide back, let your right heel slide to the outside of right thigh, and come down into a, a little bit different hamstring stretch. And then inhale, come back up. Maybe you walk that left foot out a little bit more, letting your hips sag just a little bit more. Nice and supported, not pushing past that sensation. Just releasing into it. And then exhale that hamstring stretch, have Hanuman variation, whichever one served you best. And then any twist variation, it might be a different choice on this side, does not matter. Take that supported twist with your hand at your low back or hugging into that left leg or the traditional right elbow on top of left knee. Letting your hips sink. And then exhale, release. Hands come to the right of that left foot. Let it swing behind into a tabletop. Maybe take a nice big cow here. And then you're simply just going to release onto one hip or the other. Finding an easy seat, we're going to take just a little bit of a neck stretch here, which is really nice, and a shoulder stretch. Take a twist, and then we'll start our yoga nidra. I'm running a little bit over per usual. Um, so the yoga nidra, we'll probably go over a few minutes of the regular um, kind of slow pro flow practice. We'll take about a five minute yoga nidra. So here, let that left hand drop behind you. Maybe it just comes behind your left hip. Maybe it wraps behind your back and finds your right hip crease. And then inhale, right arm reaches up. Let that right hand find your left ear and just gently guide your head towards your right shoulder. Just feel that opening, left shoulder drops, right hand guides, right head, or excuse me, head to the right a bit. And then as you're ready, you'll kind of know where it feels good to go. Shift your gaze and shift that grasp with your right hand. So that as you turn your gaze towards your right calf, right thigh, maybe even to the mat outside your right thigh, you adjust that hand to maybe come to the nape of your neck and that elbow serves as a bit of traction weight. Just open up your traps and the tiny little muscles in your neck. As you're ready, inhale, nose point up, back towards me, and then release right hand, right hand finds right cheek, on the inhale, push your head up and release your left arm, maybe give that a sway just to release, and we'll take that on the opposite side, right hand reaches behind your right hip, maybe mid, low back, or finds your left hip crease, inhale, left arm up, left hand finds right ear and guides your head to the left, dropping left ear towards left shoulder. And then as you're ready, shift your gaze away from me. 
down towards your calf, your left knee, left thigh. Adjust that left hand along the back of your head to serve as a traction. Drop right shoulder down. Not here too long, just enough. And then as you're ready, inhale, tip your nose up towards me again. Release your left fingertips, let them find your left cheek on the inhale. Push your head up, totally passive there. You're not reactivating the muscles you just lengthened. And then exhale, relax your right arm. One more time here, release, or not one more time, the first time here, interlace your fingers behind you, palms kiss, or maybe just use the outside of your t-shirt or your sweatshirt or whatever you've got on to open your shoulders up, look up, and then fold forward. Minimal weight on your forehead, letting your hands rise up off your low back if you can. Lifting up those shoulders. And then inhale, coming back up. And then releasing, just taking an easy twist, extending that um, actually extend both legs forward and then bend into that right knee plant right foot to the right or left of your left knee whichever you prefer right hand comes behind right hip left knee rises up and really just gives that right knee a tug you can certainly place that left elbow over right knee if you'd like it's a nice little twist here Leaning into that right hip. Inhale, finding length in that spine, maybe flexing into left foot. And then exhale, releasing, maybe taking a counter twist, right elbow, find inside of right calf. And then releasing, coming into the other side, extending that right leg, bending left knee, planting left foot to the left or right of your right knee. Left hand comes behind your left hip. Find a tall spine, flex into that right foot. Inhale, right arm comes up. And give yourself a hug as you twist to the left or hook right elbow outside of right knee, or left knee. Lean into that left hip. Push your spine up tall. Inhale, height. Exhale, release. Really winding down. you have any last lingering little to-do lists or thoughts, just relieve yourself of them on the exhale. Maybe on the inhale, request peace. On the exhale, surrender. And then inhale, release, take a counter twist towards the right, left elbow inside of left calf. And then allow yourself to reposition to come into your Shavasana. So we'll start to unwind for a little bit shorter than intended, but still effective yoga nidra. So as you're ready, if you need to find a little pillow for your head or your knees, maybe snag a blanket to cover up and get cozy. Someone who's bringing one up right to your chin feels delightful. Or you could even do this in bed. Just take a few moments to uh, create a sankalpa. Seven intentions specifically for yoga nidra, but it's quite specific and quite short. It usually is an I am phrase. Um, can be different according to the time of day when you practice this yoga nidra, this yoga, yogic sleep. Um, it's a way of kind of just releasing your energy from the day, really grounding into your body and kind of grounding through the different physical layers into the different energetic and spiritual layers. Um, I won't speak much more on that so I don't kind of <laughs> cause any arguments. Um, but I think we all, as going to inner fire, have some idea of that there's the physical and the metaphysical, um, and it kind of opens up your heart, which I really love. 
and allows you to ease into a peaceful sleep. But with the Sankalpa, if it serves you to say something such as, I am patience, I am kindness, I am love, and that brings you such an ease that that works well. If something more specific, such as I fall asleep easily and well, and sleep well, if that works, choose something like that. But just the first few things that come to mind. It doesn't need to be more contrived than that. Just like a little prayer. Let's take a deep breath in. Full exhale out. Inhale, repeat your sankalpa to yourself, just quietly in your head. If out loud serves you, go ahead. And exhale, let it be done. And in taking this yoga nidra, which is essentially a body scan, we'll start at the top of your head, feeling even the hair meeting your skull, feeling the weight of your head and skull on the surface behind it. Follow your vertebrae in your neck down to your sh the sensation between your shoulders. Let your shoulders sag. Feel your ribs expand wide and then collapse as you inhale and exhale. Feel your belly rise with the inhale and fall on the exhale. Beautiful. Feel your elbows soft. Feel your right thumb right forefinger, soften your right middle finger, ease your right ring finger, heavy right pinky finger. Coming back up, maybe taking a little pass across your heart, letting something soften unwind there as we slide down, softening your left shoulder left elbow, finding focus in your left thumb, left pointer finger, relaxed left middle finger, soft left ring finger, easy left pinky finger, allowing your attention to fall into your pelvis and hips. Soften right glute. Soften left glute. Let both thighs relax, externally rotating. Heavy right knee, soft right knee. Heavy right heel. And then easy big toe second toe, third toe, fourth right toe, and right baby toe. Sliding back up your right leg, coming into your left side. Let that left knee soften and be heavy. Heavy left heel. And bringing your awareness down into your left big toe, left second toe, left third toe, left fourth toe, and left pinky toe. Feel your belly and ribs puff wide on your inhale and soften and release on the exhale. Taking a few more breaths together, big inhale. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Remain empty for four, three, two, 
one, and then release. Brecht returns to its normal cadence. And one last one. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five. Hold for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four. And hold for four, three, two, one. Breath returns to its natural cadence. Focus in on your sankalpa again. Just take a nice little repetition. I am. Honor that on your exhale. And I will leave you here, just surrendering a bit more on your mat with your sankalpa. I hope if it is your time to fall asleep, you do. And if not, you've just brought a little bit of peace and surrender and refreshment to your day. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a beautiful rest of your day or evening or following day. Namaste.